Hi and welcome to another very exciting quick tip tutorial. Today we are going to have a look at how we can add constraints by using code instead of using the interface builder um, auto layout constraints function because sometimes it's uh, it's important to add constraints to objects that were created at runtime. So let's have a look at we can uh, at what we are going to create today. This is a very very simple application. Um, we're simply um, adding a view, colorize it, and apply the constraints so that it looks like this. And we will also have a button that changes the constraints, and um, this is what we're going to create. So let's um, get right started and open up Xcode. And let's create a new single view application. Let's call it Code Constraints, and create it on the desktop. I'm going to resize my window a little, and then we'll straight head to the view controller .swift file. And the first thing we want to do is actually create a view in our class view controller. So let's create that. So color view, and we also initialize it right here as a UI view. And then in view to load, we will create some auto layout constraints. And because we haven't created that view in um, uh, in, in Interface Builder, what we need to do is using the view and set the translate uh, translates auto resizing mask into constraints to false. This is the first step. The second step is going to be to give this view a background color. Let's set that to UI color, blue color maybe. You can of course choose whatever color you like, and then we'll use self that view and add this color view to our view hierarchy. And now let's create the constraints that we need. As you've seen in the example, we uh, constrain the view to all of the edges of the screen. So to do that, let's first of all create a leading constraint. And to create such a constraint, what we will do is use our color view, use its leading anchor, and use the constraint equal to anchor function. We're going to have a look at some of the other constraint functions as well. And we want to constrain it to the uh, leading anchor of the view. So let's use self.view and its leading anchor. And then we're going to do the same thing for the trailing constraint. So color view, trailing anchor constraint equal to anchor. So self.view to trailing anchor. Let's do another one for the top constraint. So color view, top anchor, constraint equal to anchor, self.view dot top anchor. And now for the fourth constraint that we're going to set, the bottom constraint, we're going to use color view, bottom anchor, but in this case we will use constraint equal to anchor, but with a constant. So let's use self.view.bottomAnchor. And the constant is going to be minus, let's say, 50 to give it some space to the bottom so that we can add our button. And now to activate all of those constraints, we are going to use a uh, an array that will hold all of them so that we can also deactivate them later. And this is going to be, let's say, the initial constraints array we will initialize that with an empty array of NS layout constraints. And make sure that this is a variable because we have to change it and append some, um, some of our uh, constraint objects. And to do that, we will use our initial constraints and append um, contents of a collection type. And then we'll simply um, create an array in the within these um, parentheses and add the leading constraint, the trailing constraint, the top constraint, and the bottom constraint. And all we need to do now actually is use NS layout constraint, activate constraints, and as you can see, it now requires us to insert an array of NS layout constraints, and this is our array initial constraints. And that's all there is to it. So let's use the iPhone 6s maybe and run this in the simulator and see the results. And as you can see, 
we now have the expected result of a blue of a blue view that uh, fills almost everything of the screen. And now let's um, uh, let's create a small button in Interface Builder. So let me type in button right here in the object library and place it somewhere here. Rename it here. Let's say change constraints. And now, because we have placed this in Interface Builder, we'll simply apply the constraints here. So I press Control on the keyboard and center it horizontally in container and also um, add vertical spacing to bottom layout guide. And here we go. And then we'll bring up the Assistant Editor, Control drag to the Assistant Editor in a second. So let's maybe add a function here, change constraints, make sure this is not an outlet, but an action and hit the connect button. And now the first thing that we want to do is actually deactivating our constraints that we've just created. So we use NS layout constraint again. And now this time we say deactivate constraints and we want to deactivate the initial constraints. And for this change, what we actually want to do is um, we want our view to be centered and have uh, a width and height of 100 pixels. So um, let's create a width constraint, um, which is going to be a color view. It's width anchor. And let's say constraint equal to um, constant, which is going to be 100. Let's say height constraint, and we can actually copy that right here. Let's rename this to height constraint. And here we have the height anchor. And again, constraint equal to constant 100. And now we want to center it in x and y directions. So let's say center x constraint equals color view dot center x anchor constraint equal to anchor. And again, we use self dot view and it's center x, uh, where are we? Center x anchor. And then we can again just copy that piece of code, rename it to center y constraint, center y, and center y again. And then we could also um, just say ns layout constraint activate constraints, and then simply put an array right here. And we want to activate the width constraint, the height constraint, the center x constraint, and the center y constraint. And once we run our application in the simulator again, we will have the ability to click on our button. Let's see what happens. So here's our button, here's our view. We hit change constraints and we have the expected result. So as you have seen, adding layout constraints in code is actually pretty simple. And this is our tutorial for this week. Let me know in the comments below what other quick tips you'd like to see. And don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any tutorials. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.